What should people seriously stop buying? Herbalife. My dad used to be involved with them to the point where most of the stuff we ate and drank was Herbalife brand. Herbalife smoothies. Bars. You name it. It was in the Godham house. He stopped after one of their products gave my mom stomach ulcers that nearly landed her in the emergency room multiple times. Also I'm pretty sure they got sued or something, but my mind is a bit fuzzy on that. I had a roommate who sold for them. He never paid his full share of the rent. It seems like roommates never do the one thing a roommate is supposed to do. He didn't wash the recycling bottles either. Then we got fruit flies. I left. So freaking absurd dealing with this man baby. Merchandise with the pink for the cure bows. Anything by Komen or that supports Komen. For that matter. Oof. I'm a former employee and seriously would not ever donate to them again. Got any stories? Well. The company made big dollar sign by selling cancer causing products then covering it up then turning around and keeping a lot of the dollar sign they collect as donations. Other people. It's crazy to me that this is still happening so much all over. So sad. Oldest known codes of law in human history pertain to slave owning. Slavery has been a plague of civilization since the start. The days since last moment of no slavery and days any human civilization was around are the same number. Shit's been all downhill since we discovered agriculture. Although, before we used slaves to manage agriculture, we'd just capture people and eat them. Pangolins. People are buying pangolins. They are the most trafficked animal in the world. What is their conservation status? Wikipedia doesn't mention it for some reason. Edit. Different kinds have different status. Most seem to be threatened endangered. Puppy mill puppies. Small pets slash birds slash reptiles from pet stores too. They come from the equivalent of a puppy mill. Hermit crabs do not breed in captivity. Any hermit crab available commercially is taken from its natural environment. The fuckers are supposed to live 34 years, but usually last 1 2 3 in an aquarium. God this reminded me that I had a hermit crab when I was little and way too young to take care of it, and it died, and I never noticed, and it was just gone. I'm a huge animal lover, and don't really believe in having animals in captivity and that was a total repressed memory now I feel so awful. Shark fin soup. The fishers only want the fin and throw the shark out to the sea after cutting it, since the other body parts have no monetary value. Letting the shark to die. How does the rest of the meat not have any demand? I believe shark meat in general is very high in mercury, meaning eating a lot of it is very hard for you. The real reason though is that the fins are worth so much that taking up room with actual whole sharks just isn't cost effective. Tuna is also very high in mercury. I've heard the smaller the fish, the less mercury. This is due to biomagnification. As apex predators, larger fish and sharks eat prey they gain the accumulated mercury of their prey. Though like how I ate a calculator to get better at math. Anything involved in an MLM scam. I'm looking at you young living essential oils. Fun fact about MLMs. When they ask you to sign up 10 people to move up to the next level there's something they aren't telling you. If everyone has to sign up 10 people, in 16 cycles you run out of people on earth. Exponents are scary man. In theory. 51 half folds on a sheet of printer paper each is the sun. I can't wrap my head around exponents either. And just 7 half folds is the most you can do without some kind of a press or machine. It depends on the size of the sheet. Mythbusters got a massive sheet of paper folded in half 11 times. To get a sheet of paper large enough to fold 51 times, it would have to be as large as the entire solar system, including Pluto's orbit. There isn't enough wood pulp on Earth to create a sheet that size. Even if all the recycled paper in the world were used, this thread is great because it went from fuck MLMS to we can't make paper big enough to fold to the sun. But not a sexy or flashy response. But no one should be buying a boiler, furnace, or water heater below 90% efficiency. The 80% efficiency equipment is ancient technology and you are throwing your money away while also spewing more greenhouse gases. This was the type of thing I scrolled down here for. We all know plastics are bad. This I didn't know. Tiny plastic garbage I see TikToks of people unboxing like these many plastic toys of name brand items. And they will have one hundreds of them all individually wrapped in multiple layers of packaging. 
Just to have tiny replicas of a bottle of Windex or Lay's potato chips. Oh those things are awful. Advertising and packaging and packaging. I now fear this is what future alien archaeologists will find our lair wrapped in. It is. I hike some people believe that humans have created a new geological epoch. The Anthropocene epoch. Which could be determined by a plastic layer. Chemical layers. Egg mercury layer. A radioactive element layer from nuclear testing, or sudden extinction and habitat destruction being abundantly evident suddenly. There are more ideas of what would be evident enough in the geological record in millions of years. That is entirely human made, and it's still being deliberated upon by scientists as to what would be considered the golden spike. Which is a very clear marker in the geological record of the chemical abundances in rocks. Due to natural climate changes, and now both human accelerated climate change, and now also in the last 200 years our industrial waste and chemical refinement, in theory this would be very clearly artificially influenced especially CFCs, as they aren't produced by any known or theorized natural processes. That is my crude understanding of the golden spike lol personally I think plastic is likely to be the major evidence. It's clear in my opinion that all our sudden and vast chemical changes combined will stick out for a long time. Likely confusing the shit out of anyone looking in the future. But also likely being a clear indication of intelligently created artificial processes. I can't understand the people that buy holiday decor every single year. Are people buying fake trees and tossing them every year and needing a new one. Same with ornaments and whatnot. Obviously people move out of their parents or they need to replace ornaments if they are broken or something, but the amount in stores does not add up to me. Why so much new stuff every year? Our city has a spot to dump your real Christmas trees to be ground into mulch. Every year there are multiple trees on the pile still fully decorated, lights, ornaments, the whole thing. It always blows our minds. I was a middle class kid attending a rich neighborhood high school. Instead of cleaning out their lockers, my classmates would just leave all their shit behind. My poorer fellows, and I used to call our end of year scavenging vulturing. I had all next year's school supplies assembled in mid-June. And I swear I still have some of those pens and binders and locker mirrors hanging around that I salvaged 30 years ago. This happens in many college towns too btw. My college has a giant yard sale every year selling things the rich kids left in their dorms. As a thrifty hoarder, the holy grail has always been that Japanese day where everybody throws out things they don't want, which often includes new inbox gifts. I remember reading that the Japanese don't like second-hand items, so the stuff gets hoovered up by North Americans who resident to their expat communities there. I dream of a school like that. Animals that are so inbred to meet a certain breed standard that they are a walking vet bill from birth. Brachycephalic dog breeds such as French Bulldogs being an example. Ugh yes. I'm a vet tech, and I'm so sick of seeing inhumane trays bred into a lot of dogs. On top of that, golden retrievers have become cancer machines. Some of the worst skin and food allergy dogs we treat are purebred poodles and other purebred dogs owners spent a couple grand on. Right now there's a 4 month old doggo argentino flown in from like Puerto Rico. Cost them at least 5k for the dog. He's bilateral crypt tortured and keeps asking what we can do for him, so he can stud. We keep explaining, even if he ends up not being sterile. Crypt torturedism is genetic, and not something anyone should be breeding. He found a reproductive specialist, that is supposedly a veterinarian who is willing to do a procedure to attempt testicular descent. I just can't even fathom any vet in their right mind, would be willing to do this. It should be classified as abuse. It's a serious welfare issue that needs to be addressed. I hope the procedure is very very expensive and at least not painful for the poor dog. If they are so invested in having a dog, why the f choose a so unnatural breed that they need surgery to stud. The harder it is to breed, the more air and thus potentially valuable it is. Just like people collect exotic animals that in no way make good pets. And of course not caring at all for the welfare of the animal is paramount in these situations too. Shit made of plastic they use once and throw away. The older I, 44 meters, get. The more disgusting I find single use plastics and polymers. I take issue with Japan in particular. It's a country obsessed with packaging. It seems like every other thing is wrapped in multiple layers of plastic. 
I once received a gift of strawberries, and, I kid you not, it was encased in plastic. Each fruit was individually wrapped in clear plastic film, and rested in a molded plastic tray which, in turn came in a rectangle hard plastic case. Ever seen that pic of a single banana in a cardboard tub wrapped in plastic? Absolutely unnecessary and irksome. Was probably a gourmet banana. I know that sounds stupid. But Japan has this culture of growing incredibly high quality fruits, like nets to catch ripened fruit, and rotating mangus, so they perfectly sun ripen, and those fruits can be 80 plus bucks. They sell normal quality fruit, like you'd expect in regular supermarkets. But the fancy fruit is for gifting. Gifting food is more common than gifting blenders, or whatever. Fast fashion. Yeah. Especially if you can afford it. Sustainable slash thrifting isn't for everyone but there's no need to buy dollar sign 300 plus dollars off of Sheen. It's garbage and ends up in the dump. Isn't Sheen a garbage dump anyways? I saw a TikTok last night of a girl who developed a nasty rash and ringworms after trying clothes on from Sheen. To be fair, this could happen to anyone buying clothes from any clothing store. This is why you're supposed to wash them after you buy them and bring them home. This made my skin crawl though. K-cups if you have a Keurig. Use the reusable K-cup. Not trolling here, but legitimately which one do you use? I've had a couple of reusable ones over the years. And they always seem to make weaker coffee. Or gritty coffee. I haven't had one in a while, because I haven't been into the office in going on a year and a half. But I think I'd like a Keurig for home, but only if I know I can get a good reusable cup. I got my Keurig from Costco which came with the Keurig brand reusable K-cups, so I've been using that. I noticed what you're describing about the coffee being weaker or gritty in the beginning, when I first started using the reusable K-cup. I buy bulk coffee and ground them at the store. I've always used the medium fine grind setting, but have found out that using a reusable K-cup with that setting will net me a shitty cup of joe. So I turned the grinder knob to the finest grind setting which is the Turkish setting. It makes a world of difference. Makes perfect sense. With less brew time. A finer grind allows for a more effective extraction. Microtransactions. Especially in sports games. Cosmetics in a free to play game? I don't have a problem with that. Gotta make money somehow and it doesn't affect gamma play. Blatant gambling and pay to win functionality in games like NBA 2K and Madden. Those can f right off. Mutt, Madden Ultimate Team, is notorious for this. You can neither uh, make Madden your full time job, and spend almost every second of your day grinding for the good players to win or be, by the coins, and by the good players to win. GTA V Shark cards are essentially the same thing. Then the end of the year comes. The next Madden game comes out. Ultimate Team players move to the next year's edition, and start from scratch, with a small loyalty bonus. And the previous year's hard work is essentially done forever. <laughs> Clothes. I know I don't need any more. I have way too many as it is, and yet I keep buying more, and I kinda hate myself for it. New clothes make me feel so good though. Have you tried thrifting? Less waste and way cheaper. Plus you could donate them back again after you're done. Also, finding a piece that fits you and is your style is much more satisfying than picking one off a rack of identical shirts. I have far too much clothing for any person, but 95% came from yard sales. Thrifting. And the $3 Wama drag. A new phone every year. Pretty sure people are trading in slash selling their previous phone to do this. New phone is 1k trade in, or sell 1 year old basically new phone for 800 get new phone for 200 or wait 5 years, and buy a new phone for 1k ends up being basically the same in price overall. And you always have the latest tech instead of actually needing a new phone after 5 years. I'm pretty sure Apple has a program where you pay X amount of money per month and you can constantly trade in your watch slash phone slash computer for the newest version. Please uninstall Yelp off your phone. They are nothing more than extortionists that hold small businesses hostage to bad reviews, real or fake. Doesn't matter. I can't express how shitty Yelp is as a company. Every time you open their app you give them support. As a small business owner, it's a double-edged sword for us. I could be the hero, die on this hill, and take the business down with me. Or, I can continue to amass a large amount of 5-star reviews, and get a ton of business because of it. 
The majority of my customers are either because word of mouth referral and Yelp. I truly believe if we had bad Yelp reviews, we would have gone out of business years ago. Do other companies try and extort you as well? I mostly use Google Maps reviews to find places as I haven't heard anything about them extortion businesses to remove bad reviews. I also actually read the bad reviews. Most of the time they are a Karen and I just ignore them and still go to the place. Pugs and French Bulldogs. And American Bulldogs. And Scottish Fold Cats. Munchkins too for that matter. I always feel so bad for Munchkins. Hadn't heard much with Folds though, but I can only imagine. Individual plastic coffee packets like Keurig cups. Lots of plastic waste. I encouraged my wife to buy reusable cups. They're easy to clean, dishwasher safe if necessary, and you use your own grounds. It's been maybe a year and we've probably saved several Costco sized boxes of plastic cups from the landfill. Crack. People definitely should stop buying crack. This response was brought to you by meth. Nestle products. Hard to do when they own 2000 plus brands. Any home exercise machine or equipment that requires a subscription to use. You paid 2 grand for a treadmill and then a recurring monthly fee to use it. How is this business model working? Cricket just tried to pull this stunt. To use their required software to run the machine. They were going to start requiring a subscription fee, even if you were using your own personal vectors that you designed. There was a huge blowback and they ended up rescinding it, for now. As an avid crafter and cricket user I was waiting for this to be mentioned. That damn design space software is a pain in the air, even when it does decide to work. People need to stop scalping pus. You could have stopped at scalping. I wish the scalpers would. Plastic bottles. Just buy a water filter and fill up the same bottle. Some stores here have machines that can refill your shampoo bottles, so you don't have to buy a new one every time. Wish that was standard with all toiletries, and also things like cereal and drinks. I use this shit every day, and buy it constantly. At the very least let me buy a massive 2L bottle of shampoo, so I don't use quite as much plastic. Pisses me off buying it over and over every 250 milliliters or cereal in 300g boxes. Let me shovel 5 kilograms in a box and be done with it for a while. And like rice, pasta, any dry, durable food ingredients that we could do it with. Alternatively abolish small packaging and this decrease plastic usage by a lot. The sewage that comes out of TV evangelists mouths as a Brit. Visiting the US and seeing drug adverts with endless warnings about side effects, followed by evangelist messages without any warnings was crazy. They have genuinely so much tax-free money lying around. They can afford to get more of their nonsense ads in to raise even more tax-free money than a lot of big companies. Caskets, especially those sealed tight ones, are dead need to decompose, and they will. But the casket can just explode. When I'm dead I want to be buried in a blanket and tossed in a hole. Let nature worry about me. Plastic cutlery and beverages packaged in plastic bottles, soda, water, etc. Close bracket. Single use plastic, plates, cups, cutlery, straws etc. Was actually just made illegal to sell in Norway. I'm so stoked about it. I feel like it's the first actual step towards reducing waste that I've seen. Detox teas or anything that claims to help rid you of toxins in your body. If you can't do that shit on your own already then you need a kidney or liver transplant. Not a tea that a fit mom is trying to sell you. Products with palm oil in. I've heard even the new sustainable palm oil certification thing is just greenwashed bullshit. A lot of those certificates are master of science for fishing is a joke. Madden. Seriously. Basically anything that comes from yay. They've just gotten a bit too greedy for my liking. Honestly. The Sims 4 with all the expansions at full price comes out to like dollar sign 800 plus. That's insane. Sims 4 is a joke. It still boggles my mind that it doesn't even have a pawn tool. How lame is that? Diamonds. Then how will my wife know I love her? Cunnilingus. This is a real answer. Meth or heroin. Shit's a good way to flush your life down the drain. Any sort of animal, mostly dogs, which has been selectively bred for features which also cause serious medical issues. 
pugs and Frenches come to mind right away. Bully for you that you have your super adorable designer dog. At best you have a dog who lives a life of discomfort for your vanity and costs a small fortune in vet bills, and at worst people don't realize what they are in for, and then bail due to the difficulty, financial or otherwise. I'm happy there are many now breeding these types of animals in the other direction, and trying to draw attention to the issue. Fast fashion. I may be a hypocrite, because these big companies do not give a fork about workers. Second hand stuff is the way to go, if you want a mainstream brand ethical brands are another option with second hand ethical brands being the ideal choice. Just wait until you hear how many articles of clothing simply get thrown away without ever being sold. Anything from Amazon, that you don't have to support small businesses, and keep competition alive. Literally any Nestle product, they're an awful company. Individually packaged fruits and vegetables. I'm looking at you Trader Joe's. Wait what? I have never seen that there. Things that don't actually offer them joy. So many people just buy shit to feel a temporary high that quickly wears off. That's why I stopped collecting vinyl records and sold it all later on. I stopped getting enjoyment from collecting. This is where I'm at with comics. No longer getting enjoyment from them. But at the same time. I don't want to sell them. I'm currently finishing up a few series that I actually want to know the ending of, but after that, I don't intend on buying any more, and then, I may go through and reread a series and decide if it's worthy enough to be kept to give to future kids or my niece slash nephew when they are older or to try and sell it to get some money back. The biggest issue though is the sheer space they take up, not looking forward to moving them again.